is being called Jehovah, you're going to see that it's referring to praying to the Father instead of Jesus to be saved. Everyone see that? Any of the true brothers and sisters in Christ, or those who sincerely have questions, is any one of you in doubt, put a two. Anyone who is confused and needs <clears throat> and needs further clarification, put a two. Is there anyone here who needs further clarification, put a two? If everyone's on the same page, we can move on. No twos? Praise the Lord. But you see what they did, right? The context is Jesus is the one who is the Lord, who you call upon, whose name you invoke to be saved, thereby equating him with Jehovah of Joel 2.32. The society couldn't have that. So, in the first part, verse 9, they translate Kurias as Lord, Lord Jesus. Verse 12, they translate Kurias as Lord, the Lord over all, who is rich to all who call upon him. But then in verse 13, where Paul uses the word Kurias, Lord, in place of Jehovah, they inserted the word Jehovah in order to separate Jesus from the citation of Joel 2.32. But it won't work. Do you know why? Do you know why it won't work? Because even in their translation, Jesus is called upon. Even in their translation, 1 Corinthians 1, 2, what I'm going to need you to do, Philly, well, you know what, I got to do it, sorry. Okay, here, even in their translation, Jesus is the one, right, who's called upon. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, read with me, this is the normal translation, to the congregation of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in union with Christ Jesus, called to be holy ones, together with all those everywhere who are calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, they still can't get away with it. Because even in their translation, they are forced to admit that the Christians were known, were characterized for calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. And yet this isn't the only passage. Acts 22.16. Acts 22.16. Ananias, Paul is recalling his conversion. When Ananias came to him, laid hands on him, and received back his sight. Notice what Ananias tells Paul to do. Acts 22, 16. Watch it, saints. This is their own translation. Acts 22, 16. Watch their translation. Ananias speaking. What does he say to, to Saul? Paul here in the context is telling his conversion story. And he says, When Ananias came, laid hands upon me, scales fell from my eyes, I received my sight, my sight and Ananias said to him, And now why are you delaying? Rise, get baptized, wash away your sins, wash your sins away by your calling on his name. In the context, Ananias was telling Paul to call on whose name? Because we know as a Jew, as a Jew, Paul was already calling on the name of Jehovah, right? As a Jew, as a Torah-observant Jew who was zealous for the law, zealous for the Torah, wasn't Paul already calling on the name of Jehovah? Acts 22, 16. Wasn't he already calling on the name of Jehovah? So then why is Ananias telling him, call on this name? Because Paul didn't realize that Jesus is the Jehovah that he's supposed to call upon. So now his entire world was turned upside down. His earth was rocked. The very foundation of his being and his existence, his faith was rocked. Because now he was being told that the Jehovah that he was calling upon became that flesh and blood Jew Jesus who died as a criminal on the cross, who hung naked on the cross in order to atone for his sins. Because all his life as a Jew, he was already calling on the name of Jehovah. But here, Ananias was telling him, you now need to call on the name of Jehovah, realizing that that Jehovah whose name you're calling upon is none other than the Jesus you've been persecuting. You see what's happening here? Acts 22, 16. So even in their translation, their translation, they couldn't hide the fact that in the New Testament, Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians who joined them were all calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But hold on. Didn't Joel 2, 32 say, you got to call on the name of Jehovah to be saved? Right? Didn't Joel 2.32 say that? Let me give you another example. Ananias, when the Lord Jesus appears to Ananias and tells him, you need to go to Saul. Ananias is hesitant. Ananias is hesitant. Why is he hesitant? Notice Acts 9, 13 and 14, saints. But Ananias answered, Lord, 
I have heard from many. Now notice Ananias is talking to Jesus in a vision. And he calls Jesus Lord. I'm using the New World Translation, by the way. Lord, I have heard from many about this man, about all the harm he did to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority here in Syria, Damascus, Syria, where Saul was traveling to persecute Christians and where Jesus appeared to him in glory, manifesting his glorious light, which knocked him off his horse and blinded him. And here he has authority from the chief priest to arrest all those calling on your name. Hold on. You're telling me Christians in Antioch, Syria, three years after Jesus' resurrection approximately, just because this took place approximately three years after his resurrection, were calling on the name of Jesus, and that's the reason why Paul was persecuting them? Paul was persecuting the Christians because they're calling on the name of Jesus? Do you see it? This is the New World Translation, mind you. You see how they can't get away with it? And you see why I'm trying to teach you how to use their translation to your advantage so you can show them that Jesus is Jehovah, the Holy Spirit is Jehovah, divine person, salvation is by grace. Same chapter, Acts 9, 20, 21. And immediately, in the synagogues, he began to preach about Jesus. This is Saul. Immediately, he began to preach about Jesus, that this one is the Son of God. Now watch the reaction of the people. But all those hearing him were astonished and were saying, is this not the man who ravaged those? Now notice where. Guys, pay attention to the geography. Ravaged those in Jerusalem who call on this name. Did you catch it? Not only in Antioch, Syria, not only at Corinth, but even in Jerusalem, Christians were calling on the name of Jesus, the very name that Paul was persecuting, the very name that now Paul fully embraced, loved and adored and worshipped and proclaimed. Why were Jewish Christians in Jerusalem? Why were Jewish Christians in Syria? Why were Jewish Christians teaching Gentile Christians to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ when the Old Testament says, you call on the name of Jehovah. Why were they doing this? Can you help me understand that? Everyone with me or did I put you guys to sleep? Hopefully you're seeing why you need to know the New World Translation. And be aware, be aware of how they've perverted the Old and New Testaments. And how they've inserted words in the Greek New Testament and omitted words from the Greek New Testament as well as the Old Testament. Right? In order to produce a perversion with the hopes of deceiving people from the truth. But glory to God, God is still sovereign, <clears throat> so sovereign that he can even use their own translation to show them the truth. And that's where you and I come in. You and I have to know their Bible enough to know which passages to point to, to show them the error of their ways with the hopes the Holy Spirit will use our meager efforts to see precious Joe's witnesses get saved. In Jesus' almighty name. Now let's take a five-minute break. Because I have a few things to show you about their translation. And how you can use it to your advantage. Lord willing, I'll try to address John 17, 3. Which is what I began addressing yesterday, but I didn't finish. Let's see how the Spirit will lead me. Five minute break, saints. Be back in five.